Amen. Thank you. Yeah, my name is John Castile, and that was my daughter, Joy Castile. Uh, we'll just go down the line. We've got them all here today. Evan is not my son, but maybe one day son-in-law. This is Evan, Joy's boyfriend. And uh, Zachary is my oldest son. Joseph, next oldest son. My wife, Lori, is there. And our youngest is Faith. So it's wonderful to be here with you today. Today, I'm going to uh, be here to preach for you and bring you a message, and I hope you don't mind the TVs. This was my idea. Uh, if anybody doesn't like it, you can blame me, but I've got a PowerPoint I'll be kind of clicking through. I've got some scripture that I'll put up here so that if you don't have to keep flipping back and forth and all that good stuff, but we're going to start off this morning in John chapter 7. John chapter 7, if you would like uh, to find your place there, I'll give you a moment, but John chapter 7. I'm going to bring to you a message entitled, Living Water. Living Water. And if you would, all who can and will, I like to have everyone stand as we read the primary scripture. We're just going to focus on verse number 8 to start with. And I'll go ahead and put this up in case you need that as well, but... Uh, verse number 38, I meant, John chapter 7, verse number 38. These are the main words that I want to focus on. It says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's the title of the sermon, Living Water. Let's pray. Lord, I ask that you bless this time. Bless the reading of your word, bless the receiving of it into our hearts. Lord, I just ask your just uh, Holy Spirit to indwell this place and fill our hearts and open up our minds and, and our hearts to receive, Lord, a word today that maybe we hadn't thought of before, that it will help us in our daily walk with you. We just thank you for all that you're doing here at Virginia Avenue Baptist Church, and I pray over this decision. Uh, that these folks will be making over the next couple of weeks, and I just pray that you will speak clearly and intimately to each and every heart involved. We love you and we praise you. In Christ's name, I pray and ask. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. Again, we're going to be looking at the title of this sermon, again, is Living Water. As an introduction, I want us to realize the background here. I'm going to go back and... Um, there we go. We're going to look at the context of what's happening here with Jesus. Jesus is standing in Jerusalem here. He's in a feast, and he's talking to the people about something that they are not familiar with. If we read the entire uh, context, we read this. We look at all verses. Verse 37 says, In the last day, that means in the last day of the feast that was going on there where Jesus was standing, at the last day, a great uh, day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying this. He said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me, and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, we'll cover what the scriptures are in a moment, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now the people didn't really understand what he was talking about, but the scripture makes it clear to us in verse 38. It says, but this spake he of the spirit, which they had uh, believe on him, should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So what's happening here is Jesus is standing at a great feast. This feast was called the Feast of First Fruits. Now the Feast of First Fruits was a festival com uh, commanded by the Lord that took place within the celebration of the Passover. So at the last tail end of the Passover, they had this celebration. It was one of the seven feasts of the Lord, and the Feast of First Fruits, as it was called, was celebrated on the 16th day of the Jewish month of Nisan, two days after the Passover festival began, roughly in late March or early April. So this time of the year. And the Feast of First Fruits served as a reminder to the Israelites of God's provision 
in the promised land. Ultimately, the Israelites were to acknowledge that God had rescued them from slavery in Egypt and provided them a place to live and to grow crops. We read about that in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 26, the first 11 verses. Now, this is the very day on which the Holy Spirit would later come, which is now what we call the day of Pentecost. So the Feast of First Fruits happens on the same day of the day of Pentecost, which comes later on in the book of Acts chapter number 2. But in this moment in John chapter 7, this day was still known in Jesus' culture as the Feast of First Fruits. And it's on this day in this passage that Jesus makes an announcement about the Holy Spirit. Now, he also had already talked to someone prior in John chapter number 4 about this same idea. Let's go back and look at those verses. So if we read that passage, we see the story of the woman at the well. So this woman is out there. We know her backstory. She's been married five times, living with someone she wasn't married with, and nobody wanted to be around her. But I'm glad Jesus wants to be around those who no one else wants to have anything to do with sometimes. Amen? I'm glad Jesus has come to me in my moments of life where no one wanted to be around me, but Jesus is always there. As that song we just sang, there was Jesus. He's always there, even in your most difficult times and hours. And he was there for this lady who was out there at the well in the hot and the heat of the day because no one else wanted to be near her, and she had to go when no one else was there. And Jesus answered and said to this lady, because she, he asked for a drink. She's like, you don't have anything to drink, with, you know, pull water with. What, what's going on here? And this is what the conversation looks like. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that said to you, give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus said, he answered and said to her, Whosoever drinketh of this water, this living water I'm talking to you about today, will never thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give, well, let me go back, sorry. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give, him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him. This is the key today. This is what I want you to focus on this morning. This water that Jesus is giving, that he's declared to this woman, he's declaring to the Jewish culture at this day of the Feast of first fruits, later called the day of Pentecost. He says this, the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now, this was an absolutely profound statement that Jesus is making. The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament interacted with men externally. He would come and fill people. He would move them. We know the Holy Ghost of God moved men to write down the words of the, the Bible that we have today. and We know it's all inspired by God and there's no errors in it. Amen. I hope you believe that today. There's no errors in God's word and the Holy Spirit moved men to do these things and all that was present in the Old Testament. But the Holy Spirit indwelling people, living inside of them, giving them powers that they had never had before and a comfort they never experienced before and a peace that passes all understanding, that was a foreign concept to the Jews in Jesus' day. Sadly, it's a foreign concept to people still today in many of our churches. But this was a profound thing. This was a new thing. Not only was it profound, but it was prophetical. Jesus had made these statements already in John chapter number four, as we just looked at. Here's that passage again. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting Life, And not only did he say it then, but it had been said over a thousand years before Jesus came. We see the prophets of the Old Testament have said very similar things. 
in the book of Proverbs, again, written a thousand years before Christ, says this, when the wicked cometh, and then cometh also contempt with ignominy reproach, which means shameful reproach. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Amen? We see in Isaiah, he said this in chapter 12, verse 3, Therefore, with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation. Do you ever get in a point in your life where you feel like you need something? Well, that's this well I'm talking about today. This is that thing you tap into, that place, that space through the Holy Spirit that you can receive something that you need right in your hour of need. Isaiah 44, 3 says this, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty And floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. Now, how can we have this kind of access today? How can we have access to these wells I'm talking about? These these, uh, areas that we need to reach into that God's spirit will be poured out upon us and upon our seed for generations to come. I think of the future of many churches oftentimes. If you think about the future of Virginia Avenue Baptist Church, where is this church going to be in five years, 10 years, 50 years, 100 years down the road? we got to have that access for the community to tap into something that they're going to need, not just now, but for generations to come. What is this thing that I'm talking about? We have access to this kind of ability. We have access to these resources. How is that? Through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. Did you know right now, in your deepest, darkest moments of your life, you have access to a comfort that no one else can provide you here on this planet? You have access to a peace that you'll never be able to comprehend. You have access to power and authority to overcome your deepest, darkest thoughts. And it's all going to be accomplished through this living water that Jesus is talking about. That's what he's talking about when he says to the woman at the well and to these people at the feast about this living water. He's speaking of the Holy Spirit. Now, there were a lot of interesting reactions to Jesus in his day. There's probably a lot of interesting reactions right now going on in this room. But here are some of the reactions that Jesus got. The Jews marveled and said, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? They're like, this is the carpenter's son. Jesus the carpenter, how does he know all these things? Where, where did he get educated from? Where did he go to school? That was one reaction. Another one is found in Later, uh, right, right before this verse, this passage in verse 31, says that many uh, of the people believed on him said, when Christ cometh, ooh, they're looking for Christ. Who is Christ? Christ is the Holy One of God. In the New Testament, the word Christ is mentioned 537 times. In the Old Testament, the, Christ, the word Christ is never used, but the word Messiah was used twice. In Daniel chapter number 9, verses 25 and 26, the Old Testament word Messiah is the New Testament word Christ. And Jesus is the Christ. He was a Christ. He is a Christ. And they were looking for the Christ, but they didn't think that Jesus was him yet. That's why they said this statement. When Christ cometh... Will he do more miracles than these which this man has done? Even though they didn't believe Jesus was the Christ at that point, they knew there was something special about him, and they began to listen and began to learn. The officers answered. Here we're getting into the elite of the group. The officers answered, never man spake like this man. They knew there was something different about Jesus. And we even see this in verse 48. The question is asked, have any of the rulers... Or of the Pharisees believed on him? We know that one did. Back in John chapter 3, Nicodemus, one of the religious rulers, the ruler of the Pharisees, came to Jesus by night. And he asked him all these very important questions. So people were beginning to receive what Jesus was all about. And there were a lot of reactions there. But there's one reaction that I'm concerned with this morning. 
There's only one reaction that's really relevant to me right now, and that is what is your reaction to Jesus? That should be the only thing you're focused on right now in this moment, in this morning, is what is your reaction to what Jesus is trying to give you, what he's trying to offer you. Jesus is wanting a reaction. He's even inviting a reaction from you, even still today, 2,000 years later. And that's the first thing that I want to look at this morning. The first point is I want us to investigate the invitation to receive this living water. He invited the people of his day to receive living water. He invited the woman at the well to receive living water. He's inviting you right now this morning to receive this thing called living water. So let's look at the invitation. The invitation is to who? Anyone who wants to receive it. Amen? Anyone can come to Christ. Amen? Amen. Anyone, regardless of their background, regardless of their status in life, regardless of their history, anyone can come to Jesus. Who can receive this? Well, verse 37 says, if any man thirst, if any man thirst, it's getting to be summertime and we're going to get thirsty outside, right? We know what it feels like to be thirsty. Our water get, our mouth gets dry and we want some water and we want that thirst quenched. If any man thirst, Proverbs 18, going back to that, who can have wisdom? You want wisdom today? Who can have wisdom that flows like a brook? Well, Proverbs 18 says we can tap into that. Who can draw water out of the wells of salvation? As Isaiah wrote in chapter 12, who can have God's blessing poured out upon them and upon their seed and blessings upon them and their families? Isaiah 44 verse 3 said, who can receive this? Anybody can receive this. You can receive this this morning. Your neighbors can receive this this morning. The people who are not here in these pews can receive this today. How are they going to receive it? Well, we're going to share it with them, amen? You're going to have the power of the Holy Spirit to go and witness and to testify and to help people in their time of need. Anyone can come to Christ. I love the whosoever's of the Bible, don't you? Whosoever. This is not a limited thing to a certain group of people. Anyone can come to Christ. Anyone can receive salvation. What does the Bible say in the most famous verse of the Bible? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that... There we go. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I love Luke 2. This is the announcement of the angels came to the shepherds on the hillside. And they said this, the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to who? All people. Amen. Thank you for the participation. Later in Luke chapter 2, we see Simeon. He's holding Jesus as a week, year old, uh, uh, one week old. And he's standing there, and Jesus has been brought to the temple. And Simeon takes Jesus in his arms, and he blessed God, and he said... Now let thy servant depart in peace. Keep in mind, this is a Jewish fella, right? This was way back when, when the whole Jewish versus Gentiles thing was pretty hotly debated in Jerusalem and still going on today with the wars and everything. But this man said, Now let your servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, amen, and a light to lighten the Gentiles. He was Jewish speaking this, but he mentioned the Gentiles first when Jesus was one week old. This message is already being prepared to be sent to every person on the planet, even as Jesus was still a one week old infant, and the glory of thy people, Israel. This message is to all People. The invitation has been extended to anyone desiring this thing called living water. Not to those who have fasted and prayed long enough. Not to those who have prayed through or loud or long enough. Not to those who have repeated phrases or praises enough. And not to those who have recently taken the sacraments or been to confession or anything like that at all. No, this invitation is extended to all who are thirsty, amen, anyone, how wonderful to express it this way, because some, including myself, may not 
know how to be religious enough or good enough or righteous enough or understand theology enough or to reform enough. Some people may not understand what that's all about or even get close to that, but everybody knows what it feels like to be thirsty. Amen. Jesus knows how to put things in a way that reaches all people. Every, peop- every person knows what this feels like. Do you thirst to know that your guilt is gone? Amen. Do you thirst to know that your record is clean in heaven before God? I thirst for that, amen. Every single day I wake up, I I, I long for that. I have a craving for that. Are you uh, thirsty to know that you are right with the righteous one of God in heaven? Do you want to know that you are right with him? Amen. One of you do, anyway. (laughs) I pray that you thirst for that kind of fellowship with God because that's what it takes to be the first step of receiving living water. you got to be thirsty. Brother David, I think we need to pass out some salt cubes that make everybody thirsty when they come in here, right? Thirsty for this living water that I'm talking about. That's the first thing, is the invitation is to anyone who wants to receive it. The second thing, I want us to notice the instruction for receiving this living water. It's very, very simple, we look at our text, this is John 7, verse 37. We're still there, if you've got your Bible still open. John 7, verse 37, he said, If any man thirst, here's the instruction, let him come unto me and drink. <laughs> it doesn't get any easier than that. That's all you have to do. If you're thirsty, if you crave Jesus in your life, if you crave God to have authority upon you, just come to him and drink. That's all there is to it. It's really that simple. Let him come unto me and drink. To receive this refreshing water, all you have to do is come to him. Consider what Isaiah said in chapter 55, verse 1. Ho, he says, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye by. What is that? He that hath no money? Come ye buy and eat, yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. How is that possible? Because what I'm talking about today has already been paid for by the blood of Jesus. It's already been purchased on your behalf. You and I are a prized possession, a purchased possession of God through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's already done everything that needs to be done for you to go to heaven. Amen. I'm glad for that because I've always messed up all throughout my life trying to get it right. I can't do it. It's got to be him. It's got to be what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary that gets you into heaven. All you have to do is come unto him and drink. Think of the imagery of that. What are you doing when when I get a bottle of water here and I take a drink? What happened to some of that water? It got inside me, right? When you come to Jesus and drink of him, he will get inside of you. He will come live within you through the power of the Holy Spirit and enable you to do things you've not been able to do previously. He'll keep you from doing some things that you've been doing all along, right? That's kind of how that is. The Bible verse says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. He will keep you from the things you don't need to be doing and enable you to do the things that you've never been able to do before. Aren't you excited about that today? You can have that. If any man thirsts, all you've got to do is come unto him and drink. Also reconsider the last invitation of the Bible. Revelation twenty two seventeen, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him who is athirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life Freely. What is meant by come unto me and drink? To come to him is simply to believe on him. That's all there is to it. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. To come to him is to trust in him. To come to him is to receive him into your life. It's a life transforming thing. I don't know the science, somebody probably does. How long can you go without water before you die? Less than a month? month. 
three days or something like that. So why do we try to go sometimes a week without coming to church? Or a couple of weeks without cracking our Bible and reading it for ourselves, amen? Don't trust what I'm selling. You trust with the Bible. I'm going to do my best to tell you exactly what this Bible says, whether we like it or not. But don't trust me. Trust God. Amen? Study this thing for yourself. That's what happened in the whole uh, first millennia, the dark ages as it was called. There's a certain group of, of churches out there teaching whatever they wanted to teach. And then finally around 1400 AD, this guy named John Wycliffe, he, he started reading the original scriptures for himself the best he could. He's listening to the preacher. He's reading it. And he's like, these don't match up. I've got to get this in the hands of everyday people. The English language came about about a thousand years after Christ. And John Wycliffe is the guy that began to handwrite copies of the Bible in the English language so that every person of the common tongue of that day was English could read it for themselves and not be fooled by the church leaders of their time. We got to read the Bible, amen. We got to take it in. Let it get into our heart. Let it get into our soul. To come to Him is simply to receive Him, to make Him part of who you are. Note that the requirement for receiving the Holy Spirit is the same as that for receiving Christ. The instructions are exactly the same. Upon receiving Christ, we are baptized into the body of believers by the Holy Spirit. When you truly come to Christ and confess Him to be Lord and Savior of your life, what is Romans 10, verse 9 and 10? It says, if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You're not confessing your sins to someone and that gets you right with God. That don't work. That helps sometimes, but that doesn't get you right with God. What confession matters is confessing Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life. That's how the thief on the cross got saved. He said, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. That alone got him saved. He wasn't even trying to. But in confessing that, he confessed that Jesus Christ was Lord. And if we'll confess him to be our Lord and Savior, we will receive this living water. We'll receive the Holy Spirit. He comes and he moves into us. He indwells in us. He lives inside us. He lives through us. So how can you have this kind of power and privilege of having the Holy Spirit live inside of you? All you got to do is receive and believe in Jesus. So let's look at our points. I'm almost done. The first point was the invitation to receive this living water is extended to anyone that wants to receive it. Anyone who is thirsty, let him come and drink. The second one is the instruction for receiving this living water is simply to believe and receive Jesus Christ into your life. Maybe you've never done that today. Maybe you thought you did. That's part of my testimony. I'll share with that next week. I spent 13 years of my life thinking I was saved, and I wasn't. I was trying to get there on my own, trying to impress God by whatever I was trying to offer him. That doesn't cut it. It won't get you there. You've got to depend on nothing more and nothing less than the precious blood of Jesus Christ to be the atonement for your sins. If you're trying to get there any other way, then you, you, you need to follow these instructions. Just simply come to Christ and receive him for who he is. The third and final thing is I want us to notice the inner flow of this living water. The inner flow. What does he say in verse 38? He says it there. It says, out of his belly shall flow rivers Not just a little, but rivers of living water. We are not to be cisterns, but we are to be rivers. Not like the Dead Sea, but like a great river. Not like a swamp, but like a refreshing stream. We are to be what feeds and nourishes those in the community around us. That's the living water that flows from us. What will flow in and from these rivers? What will flow from this living water I'm talking about today? Well, this is going to tie it all together. 
The answer to that is found in defining what this living water is. What is this living water? It is the Holy Spirit of God. That's what Jesus was talking about in John chapter number 7. Going back to where we began, what is now called the day of Pentecost used to be called the Feast of First Fruits. What does that even mean? The first fruits. The first fruits are the best that you can offer God. And it's the best that we can offer others through the power of God, through the Holy Spirit being in our life. That's what this first fruit is all about. Well, that ties everything together. If the living water is the Holy Spirit, and it is, and if Jesus said, once you drink of this living water, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water, and that is what Jesus said, then what will flow in and from you and from these rivers of living water will be the fruit of the Spirit. Here's a test for you to take this morning. I want you to take this test. I want you to look at this verse. These verses. Galatians chapter 5 says this. The fruit of the Spirit. If you have living water inside of you, it means you have the Spirit of God living inside of you. And what did Jesus say? If you have this living water, what will flow from you is the fruit of the Spirit. So is this what flows from you? Do you have love, joy, and peace flowing from you at all times, in all situations? Do you have a long-suffering That's patience, by the way, amen? Gentleness and goodness, is that what flows from you at all times and all situations? Do you have faith, meekness, and temperance against such there is no law? The fruit of the Spirit is what will flow from you if you have this living water. The compassion of Christ will flow through you from these rivers. The power to witness will flow through these rivers. Faith will flow through and from these rivers. Don't you want to drink of this living water I'm talking about this morning? Maybe you're walking around with a chip on your shoulder. Maybe you're walking around and you're upset all the time with what's going on in your life and you have no peace and you have no comfort and you just are struggling to get through the day. Suicide rates are out the roof. Teen suicides, the rates are ridiculous. I've been a public high school teacher for 25 years and at least 20 of those years we've buried at least one, sometimes as many as three or four children due to suicide or some type of an accident. It happens all the time. And they say COVID just made that so much worse. Isolation, people trying to figure things out on their own. It's just getting worse and worse and worse. What all these people need is living water. They need the living water, the Holy Spirit of God living in them. And since, how many here are saved today? I won't look. <laughs> if you're saved, you have this. This is what ought to be flowing through you and from you to those around you. This is the challenge today. I want you to compare your life to these two verses. Do these characteristics flow from your innermost being? They should, amen? If not, I ask that you come today and be renewed in the Holy Spirit. Perhaps you're here today and you have no idea what I'm talking about. You've not received this living water. You've not received the Holy Spirit. Well, if that's you today, I encourage you to come and accept Jesus Christ to be your Savior so you'll know what I'm talking about and you can have this living water. The invitation is open to all who thirst. There's your three points. The invitation is to all people. The instruction is just come and drink. Come and partake of it. And when you do, (laughs) that inner flow of the Holy Spirit flowing through you will change your life and everyone's life around you. I could talk for another hour, but I won't. But this last Thursday was amazing. If you've not come down here and been a part of the food ministry, you're missing out. These people were coming through here with needs, And we were crying with folks, and we were praying with folks. There was some lady came by. She would lost everything she owned in a fire just a week ago, and she just needed something. We were there to provide. 
And in many cases, we provided more than just a can of food and a you know, little thing of fish and pork chops to them. They, they walked out of here with hope. They walked out of here with blessings. They walked out of here and drove through there with a new attitude and a new lease on life. If you've not been a part of that, this is your opportunity to let that inner flow exude from you and onto people that need it the most. I saw a, 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 a young lady, she's the same age as me. I, I guess I can say I'm young, right? I'll be 50 this year. But I hadn't seen her in decades. She went to high school with me together, and she came through the line, and she got out, and she was crying, and she was like, oh, I can't believe this. This is awesome, and thank you so much for helping us. Those are the moments that matter to those people and to you as well. You'll benefit so much by letting this stuff flow through you and exude from you onto others who need this help around you. This invitation is open to anyone. If you need to come and receive Christ today, come and do it. If you need, just need to come and pray and renew your Holy Spirit connection with God and tap into this living water, then this is your opportunity right here. And right now, I'm going to pray as the musicians come, we'll give you that opportunity to respond to this invitation. Lord, we come to you today. I thank you for this message. I ask your blessings upon the word that's been preached. I ask that it go into the lives and into the hearts of the people here this morning. Lord, there are many, many lost people sitting very nearby this church and this community. And if we as believers will partake of this living water. Often, let it influence our lives. Let it exude from us the love and care and compassion and the patience and all these things that we've talked about today. If we will allow that to happen through us, we can see many, many, many people come to know Christ as their Savior and have this living water as well. This living water is what it's all about. This is the Holy Spirit of God. If we have the Holy Spirit of God, we know we're saved, and we know that we're going to be making a difference in this life, which is also going to make a difference in the eternal life to come. Lord, I pray for someone here today that hasn't received you as their Savior, they'll come to Christ right now. I pray if there's someone in here who feels like they need this living water, they're thirsty for what I'm talking about, I pray you'll allow them to have the courage to come forward and just renew their commitment to you. Lord, whatever the need is right now, whatever the case is in the hearts of your people right here in this building, I pray that you'll speak to them clearly, talk to them now, and have them move and respond to the invitation that you gave 2,000 years ago. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and ask. Amen. Amen.